I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Okay, so uh, first we're going to take a look at the service. So we won't get into any of the analytics and how you build them. We'll just take a look at what the service is all about. So if you have a station running or a supervisor running, there most likely is already a analytic service that is running. So if you look here, I already have it running. Um, if it's not, you can actually get it from the analytics palette. So I can drag that service in. So that's a traditional uh, service that you can place in. Once it's in, I'm going to actually come over here and say, show the AX property sheet to kind of begin here. Because this, this is where you have a lot of information that is kind of going to get you up and going. And I'll give you a couple tips to keep you from uh, hitting a, a wall, uh, which I did. So first thing you'll notice is I'm actually running a version of Niagara that you aren't. <laughs> so this is actually a, a, a beta build of 4.9. I'm showing you 4.9 because we added a, um, a feature that I want to talk about in this one video. So um, next thing you'll notice is there's an alert count. So essentially when you look at the analytic uh, service, and if I come down into the service here, you'll see that I have a folder for alerts. I have a folder for algorithms. I have a folder for definitions and polars. Uh, you'll see a subscription. Don't worry about that. And then you'll see this report, which I'll probably do a little video on its own. Uh, but this is a, a HTML version of um, seven charts that we're used to in the energy suite to kind of allow your customer to use a hierarchy and drag and drop. And like I said, we'll do a special section on that. And then a, a kind of a global uh, missing strategy um, setting that you can set. So if I go back to the service and I go back to the AX uh, property sheet, we'll kind of scroll through here. So alert count, this is going to tell you how many alerts you have running. So like I said, inside that alert folder, I have several that are running and that you can subfolder them. So I have five running. I have 63 algorithms. So when you look at the algorithms, I have them in various different folders, but these are your rules that you create. That's where they'll live. And that's what the count is. Point count is how many analytic points you are utilizing. And so essentially when um, Niagara runs through and the analytic engine runs, I have a setting called auto tag uh, analytic point. This is important because mine in this true setting, as soon as I ingest a tag into an algorithm, it will automatically apply an A colon A tag, which is how we do this count, right? And so that number here is how many A colon A tags are applied throughout the database. And I have it set so it automatically applies them. If this is false, and you start out that way, essentially you'll have all these tags, you'll be writing your rules, you'll be writing your uh, algorithms, and nothing will work. You'll be like, why am I not getting any data? And that's because this A colon A tag isn't there. So the analytic engine doesn't know to ingest that particular piece of information. So I will tell you, I can't tell you how many times, it's by default, I do believe it's true. Um, if it is not true for you, and you're trying to figure out why the analytic points aren't working, check this setting because I guarantee you that it's false and then that's probably your biggest problem. Um, other things that you'll notice is some haystack settings here. We're looking for uh, like area. These are mostly for the charts or for the reports, but we're looking for how to define a change of value, how to, you know, what's totalized, um, what's the outside air temperature sensor. Um, so definitions, uh, this is something that in 4.9, uh, I, I just wanted to kind of bring out. So we brought in with 4.8 um, an idea of outliers, right? And in 4.9, we actually created an outlier filter. So if you look at this uh, filter that I have in place, it's essentially saying that for this particular history and this particular sensor, if it's outside of 100, if it's over 100 or less than one, discard it, right? And that is a, a, an important thing where um, when you look at how we're trying to add things up. So for instance, I'm looking at aggregation. I'm going to exclude any of those outliers when I sum up aggregation points or I roll them up. 
So this was a, a difficult thing that if you had dirty data and you knew what the ranges were, it was hard for you to remove those unless you went into your history file. And so now we have a, a component here that lets you uh, pull them out. So that's a big thing. And then the last thing um, I'll talk about are polars. Um, these are polars that are not like the polars of Niagara, we think. So let me kind of explain. Um, I didn't realize this for the longest time, and then I couldn't figure out why, you know, I would take an algorithm and I'd put it on a piece of uh, software or hardware and I would bring it to its knees. Essentially, what these polars do is it will take how many things you want to do inside that polar. And for instance, this one has 108 or actually 804 things to do. And it's going to say, I need to get all 804 done within that 15 seconds. That's what the rate is. That's why I set that rate for fast. So this, as you can imagine, can get overwhelmed very quickly. So um, keep in mind, whatever your rate is, it's how, many, how long it takes to get all of those done within that, that period that you set. So if I only have two items and I set it for a minute, the first one will run at thirty second or at zero seconds. The second one will wait thirty seconds and then execute, and then I'll have all two done, and I get a hundred percent. So keep that in mind. Minimal, uh, minimal, min interval is how long. All right, the system is if there's zeros is calculating itself. It's just taking eight oh four and dividing it by the the number of seconds, and it's coming up with that interval. You can actually set that interval so you could have it delay longer or the max intervals, how quickly, right? Just go ahead and um, execute uh, without any wait state. All right, so that's polars. I'll get into this when I actually show you some uh, samples of analytics, but I just wanted to walk you through uh, what the service was all about. And the other thing I'll, I'll show you here is when you click on the service, there are a couple actions that you need to be aware of. Anytime you add new tags, um, and you move about in the station, you're going to need to refresh the analytic cache. This is only if you add new tags. It's not if you're trying to calculate anything. It's just if you add new tags, analytics needs to understand uh, where they are, and it will create a cache. Um, one of the components that you'll also notice when you look at the uh, AX property sheet, uh, you can set a delay on when this caches during a station startup. So stations that have a lot of equipment on them might need a longer delay, a start uh, delay, and you can see this in the console. Um, or you can, in this instance, I have one minute, and then if I do any new tagging uh, components, if I add any new rules, I'll just go in and, and recache myself. So that's a little bit about the service. Uh, in subsequent videos, we're going to break down some of the components, how to create an algorithm, and so forth. But this is just kind of looking at uh, what the service is all about.